Welcome back. In our last video, we showed you our five point structure for a narrative or a story. In this video, we're going to show you it again with real stories so you can see how to apply it. And remember that we had taken distinctly different approaches to writing a story. Remember that both myself, First Street Tutors, and Mr. Sally's believe when it comes to question number five in paper one, you want to always go for a story because it gives you more flexibility, more room for maneuver, and also you can create and write a really compelling story. So whilst Mr. Sally's is gonna show you the Mr. Sally's method, I will also show you how to craft the perfect story and how to apply the story mountain structure to this story idea. Brilliant, because we want you to be able to pick whatever method works best for you. So here we go. I am going to start with a crisis. So in my story, I have an elephant in the middle of a river. On one side of the river, we have crocodiles. And in the middle of the river, with this elephant, is a park ranger. The elephant is unconscious, and the park ranger is holding up the elephant's trunk so the elephant doesn't drown. Okay? But my crisis is obviously the crocodiles on the other side, but also what's going to happen when this elephant wakes up from its unconscious state and the park ranger is holding on to its trunk. To explain that, I then go into my flashback. How did we get here? So the park ranger has been stalking this bull elephant because it is a wonderful specimen that they have to move to another part of the game reserve. And so he shot it with a tranquilizer, but the tranquilizer hasn't worked instantly because the bull elephant is in love with a female elephant that's on heat. The female elephant has said, no, you can't have any part of this action, young man, and run and swum across the river. And the bull elephant has chased halfway through the river and then the drug has taken effect and it's just about to drown in the river. So the park keeper thinks, oh my God, I've got to save this elephant and jumped in lifted up its trunk. Then we have the new problem. So the new problem isn't the crocodiles, it's, oh my God, I'm standing in the middle of the river holding up this trunk and I can't keep on and I'm gonna sink and I'm gonna drown. So it looks like the park ranger might drown or might get eaten by the crocodiles. Can you feel the tension? I'm so excited. The solution is that the elephant begins to wake up from its tranquilized state and therefore the park ranger is not going to drown. He doesn't have to keep holding on to his trunk. But we have a new resolution. And so here, my elephant is going to use its trunk to pick up the park ranger and the elephant has a choice. It can throw the park ranger this way to safety in the other part of the river or it can throw it that way where it's gonna get eaten by the crocodiles. And so I don't wanna kill my park ranger but I am gonna leave that slightly ambiguous. The elephant's gonna chuck my park ranger this way, but of course we don't know what his landing will be like and what the elephant will do to him when he does land. And so I'm gonna leave my park ranger in midair because I can. <laughs> okay, so that's a really tough act to follow. Now guys, as I said, I'm gonna show you how to apply the story mountain structure to a fairly more straightforward story structure, okay? So as I mentioned, guys, I like to go for just a simple five-part story mountain structure, beginning, build up, middle, uh, problem, resolution, and ending. Meaning, in your beginning paragraph where you were establishing the scene, in my story, my model response, I would establish the start of my story somewhere tropical and exotic. For example, the Maldives. So, my protagonist is on holiday in the Maldives. They were really excited as they woke up only to be crestfallen, to be disappointed that the clouds are brooding in the sky because I want to include pathetic fallacy to establish my atmosphere. So the dark clouds seem brooding, they seem pregnant with rain and the uh, protagonist is really crestfallen, they're really disappointed, they were looking forward to kayaking and even as they step out of the hotel, they're on the beach, they're looking around, the ocean seems totally deserted, the beach itself seems deserted and there's this unseasonal weather, okay? So my first beginning paragraph is 
establishing this dark mood it's establishing this idea of disappointment for my narrator who's in this tropical place however and they're ready to kayak right they've got the little kayak boat ready to go into the ocean but they're looking and they're seeing that the ocean seems quite brooding and the weather is not inviting that's paragraph number one i've established a very dark atmosphere and also a negative mood however i'm going to turn that around in my second paragraph this is the build up remember in your build up in your story mountain this is where your character goes on some form of adventure. So going back to my story, my character, my protagonist is looking out into the sea. They're holding the kayak. They've got the swimsuit on and suddenly they look up. These brooding clouds start shifting. OK, there's kind of this silver tinge on the clouds and then the sun starts peeking through. And this ocean, which seemed dark, it seemed navy, starts becoming a little bit more azure or turquoise. OK, and this is a sign to my protagonist that they maybe can go out into the open seas. Even if the beach is deserted, even if the ocean seems deserted, actually they decide, no, I'm on holiday and I'm gonna take a chance. The sun is inviting me there, okay? So my build up is they get onto the sea, they get the kayak onto the sea and optimistically they start paddling forward and the sun starts peeking out even more. Pathetic fallacy as well, okay? That's my second paragraph. Then my third paragraph, we'll get to the top of the story mountain. This is where there's a problem, okay? Now, what is the problem? Suddenly, as they're out in this open sea, the clouds, the sunshine suddenly starts fading and they hear perhaps booming thunder in the distance. They're out in the open sea, they're in a very light boat because it's a kayak. And suddenly the heart starts racing. They realize, okay, I'm in a really precarious situation. I'm in a dangerous position because I'm out in the open seas and actually the sun was kind of false, okay? And suddenly the sun has disappeared and it's dark once more and the sea is now getting tempestuous. It's starting to get violent and unpredictable. So therefore, in my fourth paragraph, they resolve this resolution by paddling back towards the shore furiously, okay? They need to get back to the shore because what happens in the sea when it's raining and it's really violent, you can drown, right? Even if there may be a trained swimmer, they're still terrified that the sea is gonna to be too overpowering. And in the resolution, there's a climax because they're getting really close. They can see even the white sandy beach in the distance, right? So we get the sense that maybe they're gonna get close. However, I'm gonna end with a cliffhanger in my fifth and final paragraph because as they're near the shore, they're near the paddling furiously, they're paddling furiously, suddenly, a wall of dark water rises up behind them, sweeps over them and plunges them back inside the ocean. Okay, so I've ended on a cliffhanger where my reader is unsure whether this person has died or have they made it. Okay, so that's my story according to the Story Mount Instruction. Of course, Mr. Sales has shown you this story according to Mr. Sales's structure. And we both ended on a cliffhanger, which I hadn't predicted. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you don't have to do that. You can actually end it in a more traditional way, but equally, you can pick the way that we've done it. Okay, thanks so much guys for listening.